الشعور الجميل اننا يعني بعد لبسنا هذه وما زلنا فيها ان نشوف وجيه متابعين يعني نعود بحذر اكيد لكن صراحه نفتقر الى هذا الشعور زي ما قالت لما صعوبه كلمه اندر جاد خلتني صراحه ما اتكلم او اضع المحتوى باللغه العربيه واخليه باللغه الانجليزيه وكان ودي اني صراحه اخليه باللغه العربيه لكن صعوبة المحتوى اللي يضيق الوقت توقعت انه لو تكلمت بالعربي ما راح يكون يعطيها قيمتها زي مثلا المسلمين. معاكم اخوك ابراهيم السكران اليوم نتكلم عن ايش معنى اندر دارك؟ وش هو الهدف منها؟ وكيف تطورت؟ ومين الاندر دارك اللي موجودين في الدنيا؟ فطريقه ترى مو راح اعرض واتكلم وامشي لا ابغى يكون انتراكتف ابغاكم تسالون اسئله إلى ما سألتوا أسئلة أو عندكم إني بسألكم أسئلة فيعني بنشرت لكم لين ناخذ المحتوى يعني على قولتهم تو واي سبيد رايح جاي لين ناخذ المحتوى اللي احنا نبغاه. الموضوع الأندر دارك اللي تاكد مش واضح أتوقع أنا اخترت الباك جراوند اللون مش مش مناسب. قبل ما ندخل موضوع أندر دارك قبل ما نتكلم عن هذا الموضوع كريتيف مورنينج صراحة أنا ما كنت أعرف عنه. عرفت عنه حوالي قبل اسبوعين او ثلاث اسابيع فريق العمل تواصل معي مع بعض الزملاء وقلت بديت اقرا عن كيف المورنينج وبديت يعني افهم ووصلت لي للكونكلوجن اني صراحه مقصر في هذا الشيء مقصر في المجتمع المحلي هنا في في الرياض ما ادري في ظروف العمل يعني في العلا لكن احنا بصراحه كمجتمع سعودي انه وزارات هذه الفرص هذه الحاله الحديث اللي قاعد نسويها صراحة مهمة جدا لأنه جديد علينا كمجتمع سعودي والمفروض احنا نشارك بكل المبادرات هذه فمن هذا المنطلق ومن اليوم وعد مني كصديق وان شاء الله يكون هذا مسار طويل لنا مع بعض وكرفيق بإذن الله آه راح أكون مع فريق العمل سواء بالتطوع بالدعم المعنوي المادي السبورت أي شيء تبغونه أنا معكم وبإذن الله راح تكون خلاص الجدول معكم في الحضور وان شاء الله يكون هنا وجه لوجه ما يكون في ورا الشاشه. آه ومسي على كل اللي يشاهدونا الان عن طريق زوم او انستغرام. طيب آه السؤال الاول وات داز ان اندر دارك مين؟ خلونا نقلب القناه على اللغه الانجليزيه. وات داز ان مين تو بي اندر دارك؟ اتس ا جود كويشن يو نو. اند تراست مي تايلر اي ديد جوجل. But I knew what it means, you know, many, many years ago, because I've been an underdog. I've been an underdog for many years. But when you Google it, you find multiple definitions. And, you know, according to uh, dictionary.cambridge.org, an underdog means uh, basically when you have someone who's least and more likely to lose, this person or this team is an underdog. Uh, so if I put, for example, you know, me playing, playing soccer against Messi, Messi is definitely way advanced than I am. So me compared to Messi, I'm the underdog and he's the under, he's the top dog. But why is it an underdog? Why is it an under chicken or under monkey? Why is it a dog? Okay. And by the way, I, I own a dog. I have a dog. This is my wife's dog, but we have a little Pomeranian. Dogs are, you know, they're cute, but when you put two dogs together, they, they tend to fight. Okay. And that's what they used to do back in back in the days, about 1887. Um, they used to put two dogs in a ring and they fight and they put money. So if your dog is, is you know about you know more likely to win, they put money and if they win, if this dog wins, you get double your money. And the underdog, the dog is more likely to lose, is the one people don't put on it. They don't put money on it. Right? So betting is actually for the winning dog. But what happens if you put money on the underdog? Let's say you know this dog is going to lose but he won in the end of the day. They actually don't, this dog doesn't double the money, triple it maybe once or twice, okay? Because nobody expected this dog is going to win. Uh, so are underdogs only for animals? No. Human beings, we can all be underdogs. And I'm going to explain why everyone of us is actually an underdog. All right. So how, how do some people become as underdogs? So are we born as underdogs? As under, uh, are underdogs born? with an identity that makes them underdogs? Absolutely not. I mean, no one is born 
with a title and a tag that, hey, you know, this, this child is an underdog. I can't see it in his face or her face. No, it doesn't work like that. Because it's not a personality. It's not an attribute. It's actually something that you get into. It's basically a state of mind. What does that mean? A state of mind, knowing that, and I'm not a psychologist here, I know, I know, uh, Jude is a psychologist here, so I'm not trying to, like, you know, be an expert in your field, but it's a state of mind because it could be temporary and it could be permanent. If I'm an underdog for something, that doesn't mean I'm going to be an underdog for this thing for the rest of my life. No, I actually can move, but how can you move and get out of this zone as the underdog of this topic? You can actually move on and not be an underdog for this topic if you really work hard and you develop your skill and then you expand it. So now, if I'm really practicing and you put me against Messi, maybe I will have that level, right? And then that's the level of maybe Cristiano Ronaldo with Messi. None of them, they are underdogs. Both of them, they are top, top dogs and they're really strong and they're willing. Each one of them has the same chance to win, right? The same thing when you put, you know, teams, Barcelona and Real Madrid, you put uh, uh, United, uh, Manchester United and uh, what is the other one? What is the other uh, Manchester United? And uh, Manchester City, yes, thank you. All right, so it's not a state of, uh, it's not a, a constant state. It doesn't mean you're an underdog for the rest of your life. And it's not something that you're born with it because it's not a personality, it's not an attribute. What does that mean? I mean, every one of us here is an underdog. I don't care who you are. You might be the smartest person in this fan with the, the best IQ, the highest. You are an underdog for something. If, you're under, if you are really good in the classroom, you might be an underdog when it comes to social life. You just can't get out of that, right? Is it bad? Not really, no. It's not bad to be an underdog. Uh, is it bad to be, always be an underdog? Maybe yes. And I will explain why is it, is it bad to be an underdog for the rest of your life. All right, how do others perceive underdogs? See, I tend not to like talking about others, but sometimes I really want to like, just give my anger and talk about them and say, hey, you know what, those people are not healthy. But when it comes to underdogs, underdogs are looked by two types of people. The first type are the people who want to help you. They actually acknowledge the fact underdogs exist. You know, I can be an underdog, Daddy can be an underdog, Jude can be an underdog. And they know that, and what do they do? Because they're amazing people and they are strong leaders and their leadership style is the best. They go to the underdog and they say, hey, it's okay. You're not strong in this field. You're not strong in this top topic or subject. Here what you can do. Here how you can actually boost your skill. I'm going to help you. I'm going to push you. And when you go in a meeting, and you will, you will notice this a lot now. When you go to a meeting and then you see a bunch of people, everyone's talking, this type of people, they know you're an underdog and they will give you the mic. They try to raise your voice. Hey, speak up. You exist, I see you, it's okay. You're an underdog today, but you're not gonna be an underdog tomorrow, right? This is the best type, I love this type. And I hope, I'm really hoping I fall under this type. The second type, or the other type, is the more annoying one. They're actually snobby, they're cocky. Uh, you see them in a meeting. When they are in a meeting, they just speak all the time. And they make you feel you're nothing. You're worth nothing, you're hopeless, you're useless. Why do, why do they do that? For them, it gives them something, it makes them feel good about themselves. Hey, look at me, I know everything, right? This is how they think. And they keep surrounding themselves with underdogs, not because they want to uplift them and boost their skills, no. Because as long as they are around underdogs, they are almost you know, uh, confident and they are 100% you know, high, high possibility that they're going, they're going to win. So that, that, I mean, let me put it in a different word. If you, let's say you are in a, a soccer match or a basketball match. If everybody around you is really bad, and you are better than them, not the best, but better than them, you know, it's more likely for you to win and to have a star, right? So they do that because they want to be like, hey, look at me, I'm winning, look at me, I'm smart. I talk, they listen, right? They don't talk and I listen. I never listen because I'm this type, right? This type, they don't really promote underdogs, they shut them down, they just underestimate them, they will never raise them. So when you see this type of people, acknowledge that and make sure you don't make them shut you up. You don't make sure you don't, they don't basically put you down 
and you do nothing about it. Okay, so this is how, in my experience, how some people perceive uh, perceive underdog. Is there a third type? Maybe, but in my experience, that's how I uh, actually uh, experience it. Two types of people. Okay, so our underdogs hustlers. I love this word. I really, really do love this word. I think at the end of the day, it's all about hustling, to be honest with you. And no matter how smart you are, it's hustling, hustling, hustling. So, are they hustlers? Yes, but not on all underdogs. If you're an underdog, and you're trying your best, you're trying to break through and to succeed and to achieve your goals and your dreams, and you're just doing everything you can, absolutely, you're a hustler, right? And hustler might not be the best uh, terminology, and might, might not be you know, the best um, and a more appropriate term to use. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, it gets down to hustling. Because underdogs who are hustlers and who want to win, they're willing to work very hard, very in a, a very aggressive way, to get their job done. Okay? Because that's what they do. All the time hustling, non-stop hustling. Non-stop fighting, non-stop trying, and non-stop sacrifice. They sacrifice every single day, and that's what. And that's why you see them. They're committed to their jobs. They will do the job, no matter what, no matter how hard it is. They will do it. If they don't know, it's okay. That's gonna just expand their their skills, and they're just gonna break until they go and they, they they get the job done. They're constant. It's not like, hey, one day I'm hustling, and the second day I'm just like, hey, you know what, I'm tired today. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about being committed, constant, and persistent. Persistent, all the time, for the rest of their life. And guess what? Underdogs or hustlers, they never get up. They never get tired. They just keep doing it until they get it. If they don't have the answer, they find the answer. If the answer is not available, they do every single possible thing they can do to get the job done and to get that answer. That's why our hustlers, right? Hustling is even kind of like it could be a bad term in the street. People hustle for drugs or for whatever. But this could be actually used in even academia. Hustling is, is just like, uh, uh, what is that term? Uh, grit. It's something new now. I think hustle, hustling should be thought just like grit, okay? Do I like being an underdog? What is this? Very good. You tell me, what do you think? Do you think I, I like being an underdog? Be honest, it's okay. No. You don't think so. What do you think? Daddy, my wife. She's going to tell me later today because I asked her, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think I like being an underdog? You should answer this. Correctly, by the way, you might want to know. Maybe it depends on the situation. Right, okay. Maybe, sometimes. All right. Do you, do you think I like being an underdog? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she knows me for about now uh, two years, so she knows. Um, I actually love, love being an underdog. Why do I love being an underdog? Because it keeps me on my feet all the time keeps me alert 24-7. I'm here, I'm there, 360. Nothing I'm gonna miss. I'm just gonna be like, okay, I'm, I'm weak here. I'm weak there. I don't know what that is, right? It's, it's very funny. You know, someone came to me about a year and a half ago, two years ago, came and said, hey, you know, good, you know, what, what private school did you go to? I'm like, oh, I didn't go to private school. I lived in Al-Aziz, you know, yeah. I lived for 20 years, and then I've never, from the age of six, all the, a, all the way till the age of 23, never got into an airplane. I don't remember airplanes until I actually went to the States. Never been to a private school. Never actually got, you know, taught English. Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, Amr al-Tida'iyah, bin Wahab bin Fosta. I remember half of, half of my classroom in the last year in Abdul Fosta, he was actually half Thai. It's a kitchen and a classroom, right? So you can tell you how, how, and we used to escape, we used to, we escaped to go play soccer and go just do stupid stuff, right? High school, I didn't go to a normal high school. I went to a district high school. So I was an underdog from day one. I'm like, okay, this is me. I'm an underdog. It's okay. It's chill. I live in an Azizia. All my friends play soccer. That's what I care about, playing soccer, watching soccer, and that's it, right? But back then, it was different. It was a very different situation. 
because, you know, I'm not like who I am right now. So this person asked me, oh, yeah, yeah, your mom and your dad, they're doctors, and, you know, they sent you to the States, private schools. But no, 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 man, come on. My mom didn't even finish elementary school, and I've mentioned that in one of my talks. And I don't say that because I'm like, hey, my mom is not educated. I don't know, she's the best educator. But that tells you, you can be actually an underdog somewhere, and you can move from that. And that's why I mean it's not a constant state. It changes, it's, mind of, it's a mindset, okay? Um, why do I like being an underdog? An, an underdog because it makes myself shaky all the time. Not in a bad way, shaky because I keep questioning myself. I keep doubting things. And it doesn't mean I'm not confident. And it doesn't mean that I don't trust my judgment. It, it means only that I'm trusting less and I'm terrifying more and more and more. That, they do that all the time in medical and healthcare. They say, hey, trust, but verify. Trust, but verify. That's what I do. <clears throat> Why? Because if you take things for granted and you really trust them, no, you might, you might actually uh, you might be hurt, right? So we don't want to be hurt, so I hurt. And that's why I like, you know, that underdog type, right? Um, as I mentioned, it keeps me shaky, and there's, but there's something in it, and there's something to it. It's the rush. The rush of being an underdog is just like pure, pure, pure. If you take this fuel and put it somewhere, and utilize it in the best way, and mobilize it in the best way, trust me, You'll be so energized, so energetic, nothing will stop you. Nothing will interrupt you. Nothing will disturb you. Because you just know it. You got, you know, you got injected by pure fuel. Right? And what is the best of you know being injected in pure fuel? You just get all the that, that horsepower in, in you. Okay? Is it a constant state? Absolutely not. It's not a constant state. I remember back in the days when I used to play soccer, I used to be not bad, but I used to be okay. And I felt like, hey, you know, I'm not fit. They don't fit me in games. They don't make me play because I was okay. So I kept practicing. I kept playing with people who were much, much better than I am, or I, and than I was, and I improved. And this is the beauty of this. When you, when you are weak for something or on something, don't be surrounded by people who are in the same level or less than your level. No, go with someone who's much, much better than you are. Because then you will get improved. You will develop. So that's what I did. After a couple of years, I actually got fit, and they, the, the teams that I played with, they actually won. Not all the time, but they won. So it's not a constant state. And I see it in my, my, my career, in my, in my life. When it comes to work, I can tell you, maybe 15, 16 years ago, 16 years ago half of the things, or maybe not even half, all the stuff that I'm doing right now, I was not able to do them back then. I was just not able. But back then, I was okay to be an underdog. And I thought to myself, you know what? Change is not necessary. You don't need to change. Because you're expected to be an underdog. And this is a very, very dangerous thinking. When you think to yourself, hey, I'm okay to be weak. And it's okay to be weak. And it's okay to be poor. It's okay to make, you know, 500 riyal every month. It's okay to not have a college degree. It's okay not to be educated. When you tell yourself this, it's okay not to be something or not to have something, then now your subconscious is just nagging in you. You'll never get out of that, that zone, that bad zone, right? Because guess what? When you tell yourself, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna get this job done, I'm gonna fail. Guess what's gonna happen? You will fail, absolutely. No matter what you do, you will fail. If you keep telling yourself, hey, I'm an underdog, I'm weak, nobody cares about me, I'm not gonna improve, absolutely. If you keep telling yourself, hey, I know some people, they've been telling me the same thing for five years. I can't speak English. I can't speak English. It's hard to learn English. And, and then when you go do like, you know, uh, back, back, five years ago, like, hey, what have you done then? You've been telling me the same thing for five years. What have you done? Then this is the one, nothing. Which is really, really problematic. And you see it now in, in our lives. We see like, you know, influencers, we see Snapchat as, as everywhere. So oh, those guys, they make money. They make a lot of money. Okay, so what? Go do something. You know, don't just complain and talk. Someone has, you know, a couple of degrees, a master's degree, a PhD, or, or a business, and you just complain and talk? No, you gotta do something. That way you can move on. Otherwise, you'll be in the same state, and it will be permanent, not temporary, okay? To do that, 
you really need to be harsh with yourself and you need to be honest with yourself. You need to look back and reflect. What are the things that I'm weak on? What are the disadvantages that I have? What are the advantages that I have? Am I good all the time or I'm really bad all the time? When you acknowledge those and you write them down and you say, no, I'm actually really bad. I can't present in front of people. When you, when you put me against uh, Adil and Jibir, there's no, no way I'm an underdog compared to Adil and Jibir. And you say, you know what? But I'm going to learn from Adil and Jibir. I'm going to learn from the others. And you keep practicing, you keep improving. Guess what that happened? A year, two years later? No. Adil and Jibir here, and you're here, you will like, you know, head to head. Right? And he's someone we can learn all from. The bottom line, you got to do something. Acknowledge your weaknesses, improve them, develop them. All that you're going to do. Okay? There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with being an underdog. And you should not be ashamed of it whatsoever. However, you should be ashamed only if you're not moving. Only if you're an underdog for the rest of your life. And if you're telling yourself, okay, so I'm an underdog and I'm going to do anything about it for one year, two years, ten years. Now you should be ashamed. Because why? What's keeping you? What's holding you down? You need to improve. It's not shameful to be an underdog, and you need to keep moving. What do I mean by keep moving? If you're an underdog for something today, don't stick to it. Improve, study, take courses, be surrounded by the best circles around you, and you're not going to be a, an underdog anymore, right? So, here you go, not an underdog, and then go find something else. You're an underdog here, you're weak, go develop yourself, and keep moving. Keep doing that. Keep finding your weaknesses and keep being, you know, multipliers of underdogs. Underdog here, underdog there, underdog there. At some point in time, you will go and reflect on yourself. Oh, I remember. I remember I was weak in multiple areas and I was an underdog for many situations. But now I'm actually a top dog. I'm very good. I'm competitive. I'm, I can't fight now. Okay? And there's so many, so many examples we, we, we can talk about and mention today. So what is next for me as an underdog? Good question. What is next for me? Definitely uh, not settling down. Definitely finding, you know, the other place that I'm not comfortable with, right? Getting out of the comfort zone is the best thing you can do in your life. And if you really love your, yourself, please, don't do the easy. Don't do like, hey, this is comfortable. They tell me nice things. Don't do that. No, go. Go. Let them yell at you. Let them be harsh on you. You be harsh on yourself. Because when you do that, you're actually just learning, you're developing. But as long as you're doing the easy, guess what's going to happen? Nothing is going to happen good for you. It's going to be very, very weak. The essence, the essence of being an underdog is that exposure. Right? When you come in a classroom or when you come in a meeting and you talk and you speak up and they were like, hey, here's an underdog. This is being exposed, wide open, right? being vulnerable. And you feel like very weak, right? You feel very weak because you're an underdog. Please, don't be afraid. It's okay. Because that, that essence and that time and that period when you feel like you're exposed and everybody calls you that, hey, you're an underdog, this is the time when you know, hey, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on myself. I'm going to learn. I'm going to develop. Because it gets down to one thing. You really don't have too many choices. You're an underdog. You've been exposed. You're vulnerable. You don't have that many choices. You have only one choice. What is it? You gotta do something about it. If you don't, oh man, you gotta be stuck. You're gonna be very, very, very weak and troubled. Maybe for the rest of your life. One option: do something. All right. And I think um, I, I like Eminem, but uh, back in the days he had a song where he said. If you have one chance, one opportunity, you capture it. Basically, what are you going to do when you have that opportunity? I keep saying, I don't need that opportunity. Just give me a small, tiny chance. Just give me, give it to me. And I'll take it. And guess what, what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to multiply the hell out of it until I get way more opportunities than that one chance that you gave me. And I've seen it. I've seen it. My ticket, it was a scholarship program. I'm going to capture the one star, one ticket. Send me to the States, I'll take care of myself. 12 years there. Worked, studied three degrees, made a lot of good friends, seen so many things that I've never seen in my life, and maybe I will never see them. 
because it's what's tiny chance. But some people, they didn't really capture that chance. They didn't maximize it. They just took it for granted. They were like, you know, chilling. They were lazy and they didn't get it. They went back or they just got the minimum, right? We don't like minimum. You capture your opportunity. All right. Okay. All right. So this is this is very very important. I really really know that it feels terrifying to feel you know as an underdog, and sometimes it's easier for you to just you know quitting is easier for you. And wanting to quit and wanting to run away sometimes might seem the best way because it's easy. But trust me, it's not the right path for you because it's an easy path. And easy paths usually don't end up beautiful. If it's easy, the return will be very, very minimum and maybe no returns. And this is not your path. Your path needs to be the other path. Not this path, this path. The path where you know it's tough, you can see it. It's filled with snakes, thrones, and birds, and you go through it and you just fight. You fight for that path. And it's not a comfort zone, and it's not an easy path. But when you get out of that path, just like in a tunnel, when you get out of that tunnel, you see lights, you see light in your face, you see green, you see mountains and water. But he didn't know this side existed if he didn't get through that tunnel if you didn't go through this, through, through this path, okay? Underdogs, they are underrated. They're underrated because the other type, if you remember, you, we call the other type, they're taking advantage of them. How are they taking advantage of underdogs? They're shutting them down. That's why underdogs, they are underrated. And nobody, you know, want them to bloom get strong. But as an underdog, when you're taking this path, this difficult path, you will accept bigger challenges. You will accept way, way bigger dreams and goals. And you know you don't have the capabilities and the skills to do it. Can you imagine? This is crazy, right? It's like I tell you, hey, buy a, buy a, buy a house for five million and you don't have five million. But, oh, but I'm going to buy five million. But I'm going to buy this house. How are you going to get five million? I don't know. But you're going to work hard to get that five million. Exactly like if you have challenges and dreams and goals, and you definitely have, don't have the, goal, uh, the, the, the skills and capabilities. What are you going to do? You're going to work in your capabilities, work in your dreams, work in your skills to get those goals, to achieve the dreams. Okay. So that's what what end up with. Do not, and please hear me out here and online. Do not, do not settle with the easy thing. Do not settle with the easy path, and do not settle for whatever for whatever people expect from you. All right, let me repeat that again. Do not settle with the easy path. This is one line. The second phrase, two lines. And do not settle with whatever people expect from you. I don't care if it's a parent, mom or dad. I don't know, you know, lost their heart. They love us and all of that, but they don't know really what we need and what we want. Don't settle for what other people expect from you. Do whatever you want and settle for whatever you think you are capable of and you can take. Right? Do the right thing. Be proud of it, but never be satisfied. Okay? Do the right thing, be proud of it, and never be satisfied. Because the moment you're satisfied with whatever you did, the one you just got proud of, the moment, the moment will stop. Satisfaction sometimes is a bad thing. Don't be satisfied. Get that rush and keep being a developed and evolved underdog. I'm going to leave you with one thing here. All right, it's a quote. It's a quote from, uh, it's not visible here. It's a quote from the, the movie Rocky. If you remember the movie Rocky, it was, I think, in the, in the 70s, years ago. Sylvester Stallone, what, what did he do? He got a script. If you go read his story, you would understand he's maybe the best example of an underdog story. This is just, I don't know, it makes you like have most bumps. Sylvester Stallone had a script. And the script, 
he, had, he was poor from Philadelphia, was poor, didn't have any money, and he went to multiple, basically, film production uh, companies, and he, he said, this is, this is a script, please do it, please, I want to, you know, make a movie. They accepted, but they said, we accept the script, but not you, and he said, no, 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 and he had speech difficulties, he said, no, you take the script, you take me with it, and they said, no, until he actually got to the point, he was so poor, he sold his beloved dog. He sold his dog because he was so poor, right? Years later, a company came. Nobody knew that it was a big company. A company came and they said, you know what? We will produce your script and you can act. And that's when you see Rocky and you, you, you will listen to that intro, uh, intro song. You will understand what I'm talking about. So he produced the movie. The entire movie, the first season I'm talking about, even the rest of the, 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 the remaining season, First season, especially, it was from the first start until the end. It was just example after example of being an underdog. And why he actually got into the ring with the last fighter, the boxer, because the boxer was so good, was so strong, and he was an, an amazing boxer, an advanced boxer. They wanted an underdog to fight with, because if he plays with the underdog, this is from the community, from the street. And this guy is like way, way better. Everybody knows him. They will do something like a charity thing. But this guy, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky, like Rocky Balboa or something, Rocky took that chance and he kept on practicing, working out every single day. And you'll see him running, going up the stairs. On the fight day, he lost. He didn't lose, but not in like you know a knockout punch or anything. No, no, no. He went all the way to round 13, and he lost because the judges, you know, in the end of the day, they count how many fights. But that was not expected. So people who put money on against him, they were like, oh my god, this guy almost won. The underdog almost won. Please, if you haven't seen this movie, go watch it. It's a very old movie. It's Rocky. It wasn't a good example. So here in this quote, what he's saying, he's saying it's not about how hard you hit. All right? It's not about how hard you hit someone. It's about how hard you can take a strong, uh, strong hit. If you can take this hit and swallow it and learn from it and move on and move forward, that's the essence of developing and that's the essence of unfolding. Inshallah, my thawat alaykum. Habi kilma basita minni wa nifaat. Inshallah, ma tkuna l'akhira. Alaykum al-afiyah. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Snapchat, LinkedIn, Twitter, email.